Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mike. I'm the founder and CEO of Sweet Dash. This video is just one in a series of many videos that will be highlighting both new and current features. Be sure that you're subscribed on YouTube and following us on all social media to get the latest videos and updates about new and existing features. All right, so let's get started. Okay, today's session, everyone, will be on installment payments. So installment payments is essentially the ability to give your customers, and we can call them customers because they have been invoiced. So these are clients. I think it, most people would call them in our system. Uh, so clients will be able to partially pay invoices. And yes, we had partial payment before we had installment payments and they would be able to choose an amount, but now installment payments, you can methodically organize the payments, the frequency, and a lot more. You'll see in just a minute the, the power behind it. So let's just go ahead and start. So here I am in an invoice list, and I have a uh, an invoice here that I want to, let's just say we're gonna duplicate this one because I know what's in here. All right, let's just say Ron Howard, who's, uh, you know, some of you know as a Hollywood director, some of you know as Opie. <laughs> I think Tim remembers Opie. I know I remember Opie. All right, let's just go ahead in here and we'll say um, two, we'll just call it. Yes, sir. And then, uh, so this is gonna be a movie setting insulting invoice for $2,000 and we're going to allow Mr. Harrison Ford, who's an up and coming director in our little scenario here, we're gonna allow him to use, uh, we're gonna set up installment payments for him on this invoice for consulting. Okay, so to enable this, we're just, we need to say, okay, well we will allow partial payment, yes? Okay, so we're gonna allow partial payment and you saw that this installments pops up here and when I click installment, I get the choice between percent and fixed, okay? So let's go to our uh, famous whiteboard here and let's just look. This is the only diagram I have. It's not that complicated, but let's go through it, right? So when we have an invoice total, which we already looked at is $2,000, uh, or I'm sorry, in this case, we're gonna do $10,000 for our for examples, just easier with math. And we decide that we want to have three payments. We can choose a fixed amount as the model that we want to work with or a percent amount. So we can say, okay, you, you need to pay 5,000 as the first payment, 2,500 and 2,500, or the equivalent would be 50 and 25, 25. And you could make, if you were so inclined, you could make 50 payments for 2% each if you wanted to. Um, so there's many ways that you could do this, but what you cannot do uh, is mix the fixed amounts and the percentage amounts. Not that that's not programmatically achievable, yes, I mean we discussed many, many approaches to that, but all of them came with a whole host of complications that were just best avoided. Could we solve them? Yes. Could we explain them to you where you would understand the solutions? Maybe, but in the real world, I think this is a very workable and simple, straightforward way to keep things uh, understandable. So it's gonna be percent or fixed. And once you choose, uh, that's the path you're going down, okay? So let's just say we choose percent, which is very common. We can say that we're gonna call this the deposit, which is really, really common. And we'll call it 50%, okay? So now we're looking at this next part. So we want to say, you're going to have to pay the, the installment payments are 50% in the first payment. The due date of the installment uh, will be, you can be either relative, which would be relative to the creation of this invoice. The, de the second I click save as open, not draft, if I can draft it as much as I want, but when I save it as open, the due date will be set relative to that minute, that moment. Okay, or I can set fixed if I really, really know what I want to do here, and I can just say, look, your your due, first due date is going to be uh, January fifteenth. I can do it like that. So there's two options here between relative and fixed. Now, what you want to understand is that the due dates of the installments cannot be further away 
than the due date of the invoice itself. So in this case, if I tried to save this, this would fail. There would be a validation triggered because it would say, well, uh, excuse me, you're not going, you, we're not going to allow you to set a, an installment payment due date after the, install, the due date of the invoice as a whole. So all of your installment payments will need to be inside of this date. Okay, That's something that you'll need to understand. Now what we've done as far as convenience, let's look at, let's say we said that was 1214. So what if I set my um, my first due date is 127 or maybe like eight relative days or whatever it would be, but December 7th, okay? And I click save. Now I've set 50% here, December 7th, and I have this invoice due date 1214. Now if I click save, what will happen here? Well. What we will do is we'll programmatically understand that you haven't reached 100%. Let's just go ahead and do it. I'll click it, save it as open. So now we'll see, okay, well, you haven't added up installment payments set to 100%. Let's go back and look. And so we will create one for you. And <laughs> we'll call it remaining amount because we don't know what you would want to call it. You can change this now. And we'll set the we'll take whatever percentage is unaccounted for in the ones that you created, and we will uh, create a final installment payment for that amount. And we'll take the due date from the invoice due date, and we'll set that as the installment payment, the final amount, remaining amount, installment payment due date. Okay. Now you can go back and change this, but because it would be would makes would not make sense for this to have 50% and then not another par possibility to pay it, okay? So on the client side and on your side, you will see the ability to pay the installments. If I click here, I have the invoice and when you click or you can't do it this way, but down at the bottom, your uh clients will see the installments down here and they can pay them here. They will see them be able to pay one at a time. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Let me go ahead and clone this again so that we can do a little bit more experimentation without having to rebuild. Okay, so now let's go into edit. Yeah, that's nice, right, David? So if you built like, say, 45% and 25%, we're just gonna auto-complete that whole thing for you. Same thing if you went the fixed route, okay? So if you decided to say, uh, go fixed, we would fill in those blanks as well. Let's go fix this way this time. So now we're going to say this is going to be a, a $500 uh, deposit. And we can call it whatever, and we'll just call it 500 here. And we're going to say this is seven days as the due date, relative due date. Let's look at a few more things. For each installment, okay, in fact, let's save this one. And now I'm going to add another one for, say, $250, just so you can see the multiple stacking. Now remember, this is just the title. I'm not setting $250 here. I'm just doing it for reference for the illustration. And I'm going to call this one nine days after, and that's not really practical, but for this example it is. Okay. So now I have a $500 that's going to leave me $1,250. Uh, in the remaining amount, if I was to save, that would happen. Okay. But let's look at some of the additional functionality, okay? For this first installment payment, you can set automations. For each installment payment, you can set automations. And what does that mean? When this installment payment is paid, either by the client on their side paying it with a credit card, or by the admin on your side, your side recording the payment, Right, so if you get the a check in the mail or a wire transfer or PayPal or cryptocurrency or whatever you're getting it as, right? If you're trading chickens, that could happen. Uh, whatever it is, you say, okay, good, I'm payment, I'm happy. I'm going to mark the record the payment uh, in in the system. And when you make that, that's your completion event. We call it in automation, and or it could happen from the client side again if they pay with a credit card. These automations will be fired, whatever you set here, okay? Uh, on each installment payment uniquely, okay? So on this one, you can have a completely different set of automations. So for example, if you are 
creating a um, some kind of you're selling a package, some kind of consulting package or coaching package, and then you're offering installment payments there. It might be really nice to have uh, to move people through some kind of progression of of circle. You might move them through circles that ex that affects their experience. You might send unique emails to each. You might fire email cannons. You might request forms. You might deliver files. You might do all sorts of things based on when they uh, make their payments, right? If they made their first payment, you say, hey, great job. You made your first payment. Here you this and that and give them a bonus, whatever it is to keep them motivated. Maybe you have that some kind of ideas like that. It's all possible here. And, and all the entire automation suite is available to you for at each installment payment uh, pay completion, which means when I say installment payment, the payment of the installment payment <laughs> is the completion event, okay? So you can make as many of these uh, installment payments as you want. Again, be conscious that you, you th these always have to add up to the total amount, or if you're in percentage mode, it has to add up to 100%. These due dates must always be inside of the due date of the invoice as a whole. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's that's the basics of it. One more thing to show is the reminders. Okay, so for each installment payment individually and uniquely, just like automations, you can set up a payment due reminder, and this will happen uh, as uh, every cert, every number of days uh, after the due date. And this is the due date approaching reminder. So you can send a reminder, say one day, two day, five days before the installment due date. So this one tells them it's coming. This one annoys them <laughs> until they pay it. So you can say every two days after and end after you know uh, 50 occurrences. So if you want to send them 50 emails every two days, that will get their attention. Yeah, and, but you can do that. And it's going to send the same email over and over and over again until they pay to make their payment. This gives you that option. All right. And again, that's these that's controlled on the installment payment basis. I'm um, on the individual installment payment, each one uniquely. Okay, so this is a straightforward invoice, a manual invoice that I create, I I send. It happens one time. However, that's not where these things this thing ends because we are at our heart an automation platform. So let's look at what does this mean in context of an on-demand generator, a recurring generator, and an accumulating generator, okay? Because what you really want to do is develop this. You saw it, we were clicking installment one, installment two, installment three. If you want to send with the automations, with the reminders, you don't want to do that for every invoice that you create, that's for sure. That's a lot of clicking, a lot of typing, a lot of over and over. So that's where the generators come in. So in the uh, context of an on-demand generator. You see we're using placeholders here because this generator will generate multiple multiple invoices when called in an automation and we have an entire video that just recently recorded on that. But here if you allow partial payments you'll see that we're going to add installment. Let's do percent. Looks very very similar. Right? Uh, title, amount, due date. Also again you, what you will notice is missing here Bueller, Bueller is the fixed amount, right? No fixed. Why? Because this could be used, this generator could be called today, could be called in January, could be called in March, could be called in May. We need it to be flexible and dynamic in an automation. So the only option here is relative. Okay, so it means relative five days from the date this is generated. I'm sorry from the date this generator creates the invoice uh, um, that's going to result from this. You also notice that uh, in all cases in generators the uh, due date is going to be uh, relative as well, the published settings, the due date, relative due dates here. So in this case these due dates, these relative due dates need to be inside, I'm going to scroll down now, this relative due date. So if this relative due date is 30, all the numbers above in the installments need to be less than 30. If it's 90, they need to be less than 90. Because when this generator pops out an invoice, it's going to set the date 30 days, the final relative due date, 30 days from the, that moment, 
And then each of these is going to be set five days, seven days, 10 days, whatever it is. Probably more realistic is something like six months, so 180 days. And then this would be like 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, maybe something like that. Yeah. So these are just examples and they uh, can be applied by you in your business model, however it makes sense to you. Very, very flexible. That's okay, David. Uh, where I am now is in the on-demand generator uh, option. And you would find that always in invoices and then under generators here. Okay, so on-demand, recurring, and accumulating. And in this case, I am in... I'm in the on-demand generator and edit mode. So this one is the list, is the one that I'm looking in, and I'm inside it editing the details. Okay, so on-demand here. All right, so um, that's really covers that. The automation basically works the same way because there's no date-specific items there. They're all designed for an automation, and the reminders work the same as well because everything is based on the number of days or after the due date. So the things that are relative in this case and on demand is the due date. And then this all remains the same. The only difference is you don't have the fixed date because that doesn't make sense in this context. All right, let's move on to recurring. Recurring is basically the same thing, okay? Uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to give a tour of where I am here, but I'm in a, a recurring dynamic generator. Again, there's, we just recorded a video on what this means. So if that's confusing to you, check that out. So you'll notice here that uh, the, the relative due date is again set here, right? For when this generator creates an invoice. If it creates it on January 1st, the relative due date will be, the due date of that invoice will be January 31st. So if we're gonna allow partial payments, we see again, we're gonna add installment. Let's do fixed this time. All exactly the same as the on-demand, okay? This is exactly the same dynamic in every way. So I can create multiple installment payments with relative due dates. None of these relative due dates can be exceed as a number, right? 30 in this case. Or if I change this to 180, as in our last thought, thought uh, experiment. So 30, we can say this is the 30-day payment. And we'll call this $500. Okay, I can save that. And I can create a, a, a 60 day payment, et cetera, but they, none of these can exceed 180. And if they do, you'll get a validation. So no, you won't break anything. You just won't be able to save, save and activate this generator. It'll just keep telling you no until you get everything right. Okay, so that's recurring. Recurring, uh, Typically, I think you would use installment payments in a yearly, in most times when you're creating yearly invoices for large amounts, that might be the application here. Uh, we didn't pick and choose where we applied these, uh, the installment payment feature, we just made it work everywhere. So in case your business model is, is, is a benefit, can benefit from that, then it's there for you. And the next one is probably even accumulating generator. I, maybe there's a business use case that's very common. I, I'm not, I'm, I can't think of it, but accumulating generator works in the way that you can accumulate items on in this generator that then get invoiced and printed on an invoice Then this generator refresh and resets itself to zero. Uh, so if you like, for example, you have maybe legal services and you are racking up Ten thousand or five thousand dollar legal bills each month, and you wanted to allow them to partially pay those each month, you know, or whatever situation where you're you're you know building an accumulating generator that becomes an invoice that you allow your clients to partially pay, like fifty fifty maybe, or in payments of four. I don't know. Uh, you can set up installment payments here, and again, it works exactly the same way. Okay, so we looked at. Uh, the accumulating generator, the recurring generator, the on-demand generator, installment payments. We looked at the uh, the regular invoice, just a straightforward invoice, which generators create. So this is the invoice list that uh, consists of 
invoices that were generated by an on-demand generator, that this one was generated by a recurring generator, this one is manually created. So you can see even in this list the evidence of generators at work. We looked at creating both fixed and percentage scenario installment payments. We looked at the automation, the reminders. We discussed relative and, fi relative and fixed, how that works. We made sure that you understand the due date limitation, uh, which is just logical. It's not some limitation. It's just only logical. It can't be any other way. So I believe we have covered all aspects of the installment payments. I wanted to show the uh, the use case when you are recording. You have the option to, when the installment payments are completed, you have the option to uh, record a payment from the admin side in the same way that the client can pay from their side. Let's look at this one. Record payment. Oh, here it is. Okay. First payment. So this is going to be it. So see, here's the installments and here's the first payment deposit, 50%. And we can record that payment right now for a thousand dollars. You just say barter. This is where the chickens come in. Click record. And that's going to record the $1,000 payment, and it's going to be partially paid. So then we can go later and in, inside of the other due date and record that other one. Okay. So you can just want to reinforce that you can, on partial payments, you can, from the uh, admin side, record the payments as they come in via check or however it works, uh, as well as if you set up for online payment for your clients if they are if you have the gateways set up and you enable that that works in your business model they can pay in a partial way on their side and regardless of whether that happens on the client side or the admin side the automations are triggered which is the important part okay i think that fairly well covers installment payments i hope everyone found that helpful thanks a lot have a great one